The reason why I got into tech was because of a rapper. I was 30 years old at this time, and I found myself kind of like at a fork in the road. I've been working in a gas station for over 10 years, frying chicken every day, and I, I was tired of it. And I said, I'm at a fork in the road where if I go right, I'm going to be in this gas station until the day I die. Or if I go left, I've got to make a change. It's got to be now, and I don't know what it's going to be, but i got to take advantage of something and make something of myself. And it was at this time where I saw this interview. This rapper invested $7 million into a tech company. He's giving an interview about this, and the interviewer asked the same question. Why are you doing this? And he says, I'm learning how to code. Now, this blew my mind because I never knew someone from my kind of background could ever learn how to code. I thought coding was for the PhDs and the rocket scientists of the world. I don't think an average individual could ever learn this. The reasoning that I came up with was profound. Why wouldn't you want to know more about the thing that you touch 90% out of your day? Like, why is the extent of my knowledge on this thing opening YouTube.com and watching some cat videos? Why don't I know more? Like... I have a basic understanding of my body. If I'm sick, I know either A, I'm not going to make it. I need to go see a doctor. Or B, I drink some Robitussin and I'll be A-OK. Or if my car makes a weird sound, I can take it to a specialist. I know this is not normal, right? Why don't I have the same level of understanding with this amazing machine that I use every single day? Like, why is my laptop $2,800? Or why is my smartphone $1,500? What's RAM? What's Snapdragon? It's all buzzwords until you put something behind it. So he starts learning how to code, and so do I. And I get on freecodecamp.org and I start learning. My goal wasn't at that time like, oh, I'm going to become a developer. I just thought, okay, I'm going to make a website and I'm going to sell something on this website. And it's going to be the best website in the world. And I don't know what it's going to be on there, but I just know people are going to love it. And then, of course, reality sets in and it's a little bit harder than that. I enjoyed the process. And I'm not saying you have to love coding to excel in coding, but... I think you need to be curious about what you're learning, what it's doing. And through that curiosity, you're going to learn a little bit more. You're going to be able to implement new features. You're going to be able to grow. But at the same time, I find out about something called meetups. And I go to my very first meetup. And at this time, I know like HTML and CSS. And I made a very simple application where like you enter the URL of an image and it returns some coloring on top of it. It's like a really, really, really bad filter. Like, it's so bad, it's like Instagram's worst nightmare. <laughs> it was bad, but I, I was so proud of it, right? And I walk into this meetup, and I realize that I don't know anything. And people are saying, like, a foreign language to me. They're talking about Java, C Sharp, and SQL. And, like, these are all foreign languages to me, but now I'm hooked. I'm in the, they've introduced me to this brand new breadth of knowledge that I didn't know existed. And so I instantly realized in that moment that I'm being excluded from the conversation. And I said, I will never be excluded again. So I go home and I start learning. I start learning about JavaScript and ES6 functions. I go to the next meetup, like, do you know how to do an error function? Do you know how to do this in ES6? And I go home and start learning more and more and more, start learning about SQL. And I go to the next meetup, like, do you know what a SQL table is? Do you know how to do this in a SQL query? And I go home and start learning more and more and start learning about Java. And I'm like, do you know how to do this in Spring Framework? Do you know how to do this in Java? And now... I'm introduced and included in this phenomenal community of developers that are just there trying to help each other grow. Like, that's the best part of a meetup. When you go to a meetup and you're learning, they know what you're going through. I can't tell you how many times I've tried to talk to somebody in my family, I've tried to talk to somebody that I know and show them something that I've been working on, and they'll say something like, oh, that doesn't, that doesn't look too good. And I'm like, well, 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 well it's, it's back-end logic heavy, like it's doing an algorithm, and it's passing all this information, and this is really impressive, and they're like, well, and you know, I'd make it look cuter or whatever. They don't understand, but if I take the same project to a meetup, and I was like, hey, take a look at this, now they're like, oh, I know, I know that took like a week for you to build, man, I, oh, I know that was hard, that was, you did some great work there. They can relate to your struggles, and I can honestly say, meetups are a major and pivotal point in my career because they helped me get to where I was going. Being around other developers really helped me in understanding things I had no knowledge of. It really helped me in learning things that I didn't know about. 
It introduced me to concepts that I wasn't aware of. And the best part is I was having code reviews well before I was even working in a company. And because of that, that genuinely helped me reach that next level. I was taking that constructive criticism and producing a better version of my product. I was working on my craft. I was becoming better. And it helped me land my dream job in tech. I turned down six job offers before I landed my first. And it's because I had a very clear vision of what I wanted. And it was hard to turn them down and then to go back to that gas station and fried chicken. But I knew for myself that I would become too comfortable if I took that first offer and I would never look for my dream job. I had a very clear vision of what I wanted and I ended up finding it. This is a perfect opportunity to put a like on this video. It helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. The biggest key for me, honestly, was creating a LinkedIn profile. And I was so terrified of that because even when I felt at these meetups, you know, my nickname was Popeyes, right? Because I would walk into a meetup, I'd work 80 plus hours a week at the gas station and I would wait until the very last minute and then I would rush to a meetup straight from work and within 20, 30 minutes, the entire room would smell like fried chicken because I just came from work. And so people would call me Popeyes, uh, chicken man, things like that. And it instantly gave me so much more imposter syndrome. I'd play it off. But I was like, these people have gone to colleges, they work in offices, they've got a head start ahead of me so significantly high, there's no way I'm going to be able to bridge that gap and get close. I don't compete with them. Like, how can I compete? I don't have a degree, I don't have the experience, I don't work in an office. Like, there's no way I'm on a level playing field. And it was at this time I created a LinkedIn profile, and I was terrified to send a message. And I said... The chances of these people that work in these Fortune 500 companies and these big office buildings walking in my gas station are zero. The only way I will ever see them in public is if they invite me to their office. So if I send them a message and they say no, what's the worst that can happen? I will literally never see them in my life. They will literally never enter my life. It's impossible. And in the beginning, everybody's like, who is this Danny guy? And now I'm like, oh, I love Danny. I knew Danny from the beginning. LinkedIn is so powerful. I ended up creating a hiring network. I created, I, I was laser focused on the people that were, I was adding to my network. There were hiring managers, recruiters, and decision makers for businesses and software developers. These were people that I was trying to get information from on how to thrive in this business, whether it's employment wise, development wise, slowly but surely I developed these very real connections with them, many of which I'm still friends with, still have very great relationships with to this day. I can't tell you how vital a strong network is. Haven't you noticed some of the most successful people in the world have a great network that they can tap into? It's not the fact that they're tapping into random people. These are relationships that they've built. They've communicated, they've cold called, they've talked with don't underestimate how valuable a relationship can be because I can tell you right now, I have more opportunities thrown at me than I've ever applied for. And the reason for that is I've made relationships with people that I never would have met in my normal life. There's no way a developer or a d director of management at IT technology would ever talk to somebody frying chicken unless I made the move first and gave them a reason to see the value in me. I always preach that value mindset and I'll preach it forever and i'll probably talk about it and some more videos on like how to network properly and things like that and if you want to see that let me know in the comments if you see linkedin as something that you just don't know how to put to leverage it in your favor i have an entire series on linkedin the link will be in the description it's four episodes i literally interview four hiring managers to see what they look for we go over like 40 profiles it will genuinely change your life and the last month alone i got over 40 messages from people starting their first jobs in tech because of that series. I cannot emphasize enough how valuable it is. I could talk about this all day, but I want you to check out my other videos. So check out my other videos and I will see you on the next one.